Hi everybody. This is 32722 and uh, just wrapped everything up, I think, on the uh, Heathkit SA203060A 20 2060A antenna tuner. And it just has been one thing after another. One thing I can comment right away on here is uh, uh, if you have a heat kit like this that you're working on, uh, be sure all the nuts and bolts are tightened. Uh, th just every nut and bolt on this uh, unit was uh, uh, not very firmly tightened uh, and many of them just completely loose. Uh, as I was uh, finishing up here, I put these uh, flexible couplings on that I got from Amazon. I ordered them yesterday morning and they arrived. This is Sunday. They arrived Sunday morning and I was very much surprised. I mean, we live in the boonies out here and I was very surprised that, uh, that they came that quickly. A uh, couple of things I found here on I want to mention on this last segment. This is the uh, segment four or part four of the resurrection of the 2060A antenna tuner. And a couple of things that I found here uh, then uh, today, just before uh, making this video, I wiggled one of these, I don't know what you call them, veins. <laughs> In the, uh, in the capacitor, it was actually the one over on the other side over there, but it just went wiggle, wiggle, wiggle back and forth. I thought, oh my gosh, that's loose too. So I, uh, I got in there. They're, they're half inch nuts, brass nuts down in there on that shaft. Here's a half inch brass nut. I can show you better on this one up here. That's for sure. Uh, but there's a, uh, I got my camera wrong there. There's a brass nut here, and then on the other side, there's a brass nut here. So I just got two half-inch wrenches, and I tightened those things up. My golly, were they loose! So I uh, got that taken care of, uh, and I had no suspicion at all that that might be a problem. So I'm glad I checked that. Uh, and what else did I do here? The last little things. Oh yeah, uh, these are. Uh, these are two little pieces I cut out of quarter inch fiberglass and uh, it, was a, it was a fiberglass driveway marker that you stick in the ground so you can find your driveway when it's snowing. Anyhow, they were selling these out at, uh, I think it was Home Depot for a dollar a piece and uh, they're four feet long, a uh, quarter inch and I bought one and it just works beautifully for that. And you notice here how nice this turns. They were very stiff before and hard to turn. One of the problems was that that fiberglass rod, I don't know if it was original, I suspect it was, but uh, it was so tight in this bushing here and these are not that tight. I can even wiggle them up and down because they got a couple thousandths of an inch clearance, but that makes them tune, turn very nice. And the other thing, in the back all the way in the back here, getting back in the area where that nut is. Let's see, back up in here, all the way in the end is a small ball bearing that goes into the end of that shaft. And that's supposed to be adjusted with this nut right here. You loosen this outer nut, there's a slotted screw in there, you tighten up a little bit or loosen and then that adjusts the tension on that central shaft. And what you want to do is you want to screw that screw in. As soon as I find my pencil here, I'll show you. I'm trying to do this with the uh, looking through the viewfinder of the camera. And here's the screw that you adjust right there from the back side. And there's a ball bearing in between here and this shaft and the screw that you adjust, the slotted screw, is in the center here, in the center right there, and then you tighten the nut up to lock it. Okay, so how do you do that when you've only got that much room back in there? You can't hardly get in there with anything. 
So what I did, I cheated a little bit. I drilled a small hole right there. Now that hole I think is like uh, 5 30 seconds of an inch. It's a very small hole to take a very small screwdriver. I did the same thing over on the other side. Right there. And that worked out beautifully. Now if I ever if I ever have to adjust those again in the future, I'm all set to go ahead and do that. I keep sticking the pencil in the wrong place here. And uh, there's the inside view of that hole there. So that will work just fine. You can see the three little lock washers I put in these to give this a lot of spring so that uh, there's always a constant tension on those insulators back there. Okay, and like I say, these turn very easily now. I used to have to grip them firmly and it was hard to set them. Now I can set them very easily. Just lightly with two fingers there. And now I did not change. You see the shaft coupling there? That was the original shaft coupling that I drilled with extra holes and tapped them. So I got three screws on each side of that shaft coupling. But that is aligned so well that I decided there's really no need to go ahead and put a flexible shaft coupling on that one there. So I just left it alone. I, I, that's the one of the first. That's one of the first things I did working on this unit. And what else? Okay, so uh, everything works. It's all good. All I have to do is put the case on, and I'm going to start using it. So I just thought I'd make this last last uh, segment, segment four, or uh, I don't know why I should call it a segment, part four of the resurrection of the SA 2060A Heathkit two kilowatt. Deluxe antenna tuner. I'm really happy to have everything all wrapped up here and ready to go. So with that, we'll say uh, 73s, everybody, and stay healthy.